In the last assignment, we displayed the records for the students living in San Diego on the web page. Our query contained San Diego in the WHERE clause, so we did not include the city name in the table, and we just wrote in the city name up here in the heading. However, the 12 did come from the row count property. If you recall, our SQL statement did contain the parameter for city. However, in the execute method, we hard-coded in the value of San Diego. In this assignment, we will be retrieving the value from a form. For this assignment, we will include the city in the result set. When the page loads, we are showing all of the records in the members table. So we see all of the students living in all of the cities. Notice that some of these cities are not necessarily in California or even in the United States. We do have our row count here indicating the number of records returned. Notice I also have some echo statements so that I can test the values. We have added a drop-down list. This drop-down list is written in PHP, and it is populated from the database. When I click Make a Selection, I will see all of the cities that are in the Members table. There are 20, and I can verify that here with my row count statement. When I make a selection and I click the button, I will see the records displayed for that city. Notice that it tells me the name of the city, and it tells me how many students or how many records. In the event that I do not make a selection, and I click Display Cities, I will receive a message telling me to make a selection. However, the table reverts back to the original SQL query because we did not execute the WHERE clause because there was no valid value. In this assignment, which is very similar to the demo assignments using the World Database, we will set up our connection as always. Notice that my database name may be different from yours. Remember, we always need to initialize any variables in the body, so we need to initialize the placeholder for the message, and we will set up our SQL statement. This is almost identical to the SQL statement for the previous assignment, with the exception that we are now adding the city column and we do not have a WHERE clause. I am also initializing a variable $city to all cities so that that displays when the page loads. So when the page loads, we see all of the records in the members table displaying all the students in every city. We see the city column. This is ordered by postal code first, last name second. I would like to point out that the postal code for Chula Vista should begin with a 9, not a 1. Therefore, the postal code ordering is a little bit off, so the sort order may not make that much sense. The word all cities is coming from the variable and the number 53 is coming from the row count. Next, we are setting up our second SQL statement that we will use to populate the drop-down list, and we want to display the unique cities from the members table, so we will need the distinct keyword. In the body section, we start our form. Our form is being developed using PHP and the for each loop which will retrieve the cities from the database and place them inside the select element. Next, we create the HTML table for the result set. Again, it is primarily created with echo statements generating the HTML. The for each loop generates the data from the database. You may set up your code differently than mine, which is fine as long as it works. So when the page loads, the form drop-down list is populated and the table is populated.
Now we make a selection and click Display Cities. When we click Display Cities, we will retrieve the records for that city. So here we have Encinitas, and we see that there are four students living in Encinitas. This is accomplished by using the WHERE clause. If this form is submitted, another SQL statement is executed, which contains the WHERE clause. Now I will choose another city. And you see, I have the results set for the city of San Diego, and there are 12 students living there. What happens if the user clicks Display Cities and there is no selection? Well, we need to give them an error message. As you can see, we do have an error message here telling them to make a selection. But notice what has happened. We have the original table back with all 53 rows. So why did that happen? If you recall, the action of this form is the current page. So every time we click that button, we are loading the same page. Therefore, we are starting fresh every time. So every time we submit a form, we are calling a file from the server. And in this case, it is the same file and we send it back with this message. If this form was validated using JavaScript on the client, we would be able to prevent the form from being submitted until the user made a valid selection. Therefore, the previous selection, which was 12 records from the city of San Diego, would still have been displayed. In our form, the action is the current page. And our first option element has a value of none. That is how we will determine whether or not the user made a valid selection. We do not want to execute the new SQL statement with the WHERE clause until we know that the form has been submitted. So we need to test that using our IF statement. We will also check for the value of the drop-down list. We want to make sure it is not equal to none and the request has come from the form. If so, we will execute the SQL statement, which includes the parameter for the city. The parameter for the city is coming from the value being sent by the form. If the form is being submitted, and the value is none, then we give them the error message. Supposing we wanted to have the option to display all of the cities. Granted, we can do that if the user doesn't make a selection, but we don't want it happening by accident. We want it happening on purpose. All you actually need to do is you need to reload the page. There are several ways of doing that. Notice I have a button here. So if I were to make a selection and display the cities, and now I want to display all the cities, I did by clicking this button. All right, this button can be at ahref, and all you're doing is essentially calling the same file, which refreshes the page. This button could be input type equals button, which calls some JavaScript code, which will reload the page. You also could create another submit button to do that. So in my PHP code that is generating that form, what I have added to the first submit button is name equals cities. So the button that displays the cities from the drop-down list, I have given it a name. I have also added another type equals submit. The value is display all cities. This does not have a name. Remember, when you click the submit button, it calls the action of the form. The action of the form is the file itself, so essentially it's posting back to this page. So what I have to do in my PHP code is I have to determine which button was clicked. Because if the button with the name was clicked, 
then we want to execute the SQL query. If the other button was clicked, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to reload the page. If you recall, when form elements are sent to the server, the name value pairs are sent. Typically, a submit button does not have a name. We give it a name if we want to determine whether or not it was clicked. Since we have given the submit button the name of cities that matches the value display cities, so we determine whether the form was submitted by using the dollar underscore server request method variable. And we already checked to see if the city had a valid value, the city representing the drop-down list. We will determine whether the button has a name by using the PHP is set function. So we will pass it dollar underscore post cities, which is the name of the first submit button. If that function returns true, the SQL to query the form will be executed. We also need to add that is set function to our second check and this second check will display the error message. So we need to add this isSet function to both of our if conditions. That will isolate the first submit button from the second. We don't need any code for the second submit button because essentially it's just going to call the file and the page will load in the browser. Should you wish to add the Display All Cities button, that will be extra credit. You are responsible for displaying all 53 cities when the page loads and for populating the drop-down list. You are responsible for displaying an error message if the user does not make a valid selection. If they do make a valid selection, you are responsible for displaying that result set you are responsible for displaying the name of the city and also the number of records.